Okay, today's video that I want to help do for September being Spinal Cord Injury Awareness Month is I just want to talk to you for just a minute about what the actual spinal cord is. And we all know that the vertebrae that run down our back protect the spinal cord. And the spinal cord is very fragile. And many people think of the spinal cord just maybe being inside of your bones, like something like this. I'm just going to try to give you a little object lesson to help you see. And if you have a car wreck or something, people talk about breaking your back and it would break your spinal cord. But actually, it's a little bit more complicated than that, and I'm going to explain that. The spinal cord is actually, um, it's very small. It's only about the size of your pinky or maybe a little smaller than that. and runs between those vertebrae. And, of course, we know that is a traffic highway. Every signal that our brain sends goes, runs down our spinal cord into my arms, my hands, your legs, whatever. When you have a spinal cord injury, it's just like the bridge is out on that highway. The signals keep coming, but they cannot get through, depending on your injury. Now, spinal cord injuries, there's two types of injuries. You can have a, a complete injury or an incomplete injury. And that is what I kind of want to talk to you about. If you would think about the spinal cord being more like a wet noodle, not a brittle noodle, then you can see why so much more can happen to the spinal cord. For example, you could have an accident where you were so traumatized, your spinal cord was literally severed in two. And there are MRI pictures. The spinal cord is here and spinal cord is here. Your back is broken so bad. A lot of other injuries are not that traumatic. Actually, it's more like you broke a neck and a vertebrae has come in and the vertebrae itself, the bone, comes in and cuts your spinal cord. Um, gunshot victims a lot of times have a completely severed spinal cord because that bullet just knocks it all apart. But a lot of car crashes, broken bones, things like that, don't rip the whole spinal cord apart. If there is zero connection between the spinal cord, that is a complete injury. It's completely taken apart. Most injuries, though, are incomplete injuries. There are complete injuries, but a lot of them are incomplete, meaning that a part of that spinal cord has been hurt. Or, um, for example, um, my particular injury is because I had transverse myelitis, and a virus started causing swelling around my injury, and that swelling literally pinched that spinal cord to where it is not severed in two, it was just squished because the consistency is so soft. It is still damaged, but it's squished. And so the swelling is what did the damage. I didn't have a traumatic spinal cord injury from a car wreck or a gunshot wound. I have a non-traumatic spinal cord injury because it was caused internally by the virus. So the, the spinal cord itself can be hurt in many different ways. It can be squished, it can be bruised, it can be slit, it can be smashed, or it can be totally ripped apart. So if there's no connection, it's a complete injury. If there is still some connections, it's considered an incomplete injury. Now, just because it's an incomplete injury does not mean you'll ever walk again. They vary. Spinal cord injuries are like snowflakes and fingerprints. No injury looks the same. They're all different. And really, spinal cord nerves never regenerate. Spinal cord tissue cannot regenerate. What happens is nerves can learn to reroute. And sometimes that will happen. And a lot of your therapy programs they have out there is to constantly rework and try to encourage these nerves to keep making new connections and new pathways. And so sometimes you do get returned from spinal cord injuries, sometimes you don't. It depends on the severity of your issue, of your um, injury for your spinal cord. So when you look at somebody with a spinal cord injury, two different people, you can't go to them and say, hey listen, I had this second cousin and he got hurt and he's walking around fine. So you're going to be fine. That's not consistent to say that because no two injuries are the same. Maybe his spinal cord was just bruised or maybe it was just under trauma and in shock for a while and it was able to regenerate and get him function back, which is great. But other people's spinal cord injuries may not have that. Maybe theirs was squished more or theirs was cut deeper. And what the, the spinal cord is just so sensitive. It's like taking your computer cord that's all plugged into the wall and cutting it through partially. You're going to find some major glitches in your programming at that time. So I just wanted to give you a little bit of education on the spinal cord, what it means to be an incomplete injury versus a complete injury. I'm an incomplete injury. My spinal cord was squished from the swelling. Um, I have a friend. She was shot. She has a complete injury. And um, both of us sit in wheelchairs. Both of us are paraplegics. Both of us are very active. But our spinal cord injuries are totally different. So it's very good to understand the difference of the spinal cord injury as, as someone that with a spinal cord injury and as someone that deals or learned is learning about people's spinal cord injuries. So... That's lesson one. Thanks for watching.